Take a look at this. This is a graph of the number of electricians in the United States, but it doesn't make any sense because it looks like it's going up, which is great in a world of solar panels, data centers, and electric cars. But here's the problem. We're losing more electricians than we're gaining. Folks predict a 9% employment growth for electricians from 2024 to 2034, but we'd still be losing more electricians overall. And here's the part that blows my mind. This is a job where you can earn six figures in just a few years without a college degree. That should be a slam dunk for labor supply. So why don't people want this job? If we can't figure this out, America's infrastructure is in trouble. EV chargers don't get installed. Data centers don't come online and solar projects sit in limbo. The entire electric economy slows down, not because we lack the technology, but because we don't have the people to plug it in. To figure this out, I dug through pages and pages of labor statistics, policy bills, and went back decades to understand where this problem originates. And what I learned is that this might not be about salary or age, but a decision made decades ago that's now come back to haunt us. So to understand the dynamics of this labor market, the first thing we need to understand is how electricians get trained. Correspondence schools offer theoretical work in the various electrical fields, and there are many reputable vocational and trade schools with good equipment in which a young man who is mechanically inclined can get both theory and practical training. It all starts with an apprenticeship. The Electrical Training Alliance is a partnership between these two trade organizations the IBEW and the NECA. There are other paths to becoming an electrician, but this is one of the most recognized. This program started in 1947 under a different name with the explicit aim of increasing the number of trained electrical workers for the construction industry. Because of the increase in the uses of electricity and the growth of electrical industries, there is a steady demand for trained and skilled electrical workers, and this demand promises to continue. I mean, listen to that. All the way back in 1942, they understood that because of the forecasted rise in demand for electricians, they needed to train new ones. This sentiment is echoed today by the IBEW, one of the foremost organizations that trains new electricians. The future of our union and the labor movement depends on experienced members passing knowledge to the next generation of the world's best electricians. This idea is the key here. The steady flow of knowledge being passed down from veteran to apprentice that's how you sustain an industry. And making sure we do this is critical because today the United States is entering a particularly energy hungry era. The Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act of 2021 injected funding and incentives for EV charging stations, renewable energy projects, grid modernization, and energy efficient building upgrades. Beyond that, residential demand has increased as new homes move towards EV charging, electrical appliances, and solar. But the biggest thing driving the need for more electricians data centers. These are enormous buildings full of computers and servers that do all the stuff we do online, from streaming video to using AI. And with how big AI is now, data centers are on track to double or even triple their power usage by 2028. That's about 12% of the US's energy consumption, 12%. Like imagine you're at a party with a thousand people and one guy takes an eighth of the cake. So big picture in the US, Policy and everyday life right now need way more electricity and therefore way more electricians. And historically, we understood how important that was. But here's where things get tricky because for all the green initiatives and plans for data centers, if we don't have enough electricians to wire them up, none of that matters. Remember how earlier they knew how important it was to train up the next generation of electricians? Well, by the early 2000s, things had changed a bit. It's time to come together to get it done so that we can truthfully say in America, no child will be left behind, not one single child. That's George W. Bush urging Congress to finally ratify his new education bill in 2001. No Child Left Behind introduced a key shift in education funding. In exchange for federal funds, this bill required states to implement annual testing in reading and math for grades three through eight and publicly report the results. This meant that standardized test scores became the key measure of school performance, with real monetary consequences for low scores. On its face, this seems like it's a net positive. Raising minimum academic achievement shouldn't be a bad thing. But a superintendent for a California school put it plainly. Do we put a wood shop and machine shop in a new high school or more academic classrooms? We've backed off 
from those trade programs. Such an intense focus on tested academic subjects squeezed out other parts of the curriculum as schools prioritize subjects that earn federal funding. The choice was clear, prioritize academics, get federal funds. It goes beyond just tight budgeting. In 2005, the Bush administration proposed eliminating the Federal Perkins Vocational Education Program, which provided funding for schools to teach the type of hands-on education that blue-collar trades get. The administration argued that these funds showed little or no evidence of improved outcomes. At the same time, national campaigns throughout the 90s and 2000s heavily emphasized college readiness as the preferred path for students. And these weren't small campaigns. Know How to Go, for example, raised more than $155 million in total media support. These public policies and the national discourse that followed it helped create the assumption that a four-year college degree was the only desirable outcome for every student. So the goal may have been no child left behind, but it also meant that the trades were left behind, which means huge issues for the energy sector 20 years later. As of October 2024, 53 gigawatts worth of solar projects have faced delays. That's enough power for roughly 10 million homes ready to go, but undelivered. On the nation's roads, the story is similarly bleak. A 2024 study found that America's 64,000 public chargers, a number that's already woefully inadequate for our AV needs, don't work one out of five times. In a data center that hasn't been set up, that represents hundreds of millions in stranded investment, ending any competitive advantage in AI before it could even begin. And I just want this to be clear. This is an industry with 81,000 annual job openings and nowhere near enough workers to fill them. Without them, we can kiss our green energy and AI future goodbye. And that's a shame because the future is something that you should always be able to bet on. That's why we put together five game-changing guides to help you kickstart 2026. This is your completely free copilot to understanding business trends, AI toolkits, and side hustle ideas you could actually implement in the new year. To get access, click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen. And so returning to the question from the top of this video, why are folks struggling to take up this well-paying job? I think I get it now. It's summarized poignantly by the 2025 annual blue collar report from Jobber. It found that 71% of Gen Z feels that there's a stigma associated with vocational school. Beyond that, this is a report from the IC, and it's one of the largest trade associations. And in 2024, it found that one of the major reasons apprentices aren't joining the field is because of the push by society to get a college degree. More than two decades after No Child Left Behind, America still sees vocations as the wrong choice for its youth. Even my mom, who's a Haitian immigrant, told me for my entire childhood that I needed a bachelor's degree to be successful. This was and is a pervasive narrative baked into our DNA, built up by decades of public policy and cultural messaging. And it's not like that's Gen Z's fault, right? If only 31%, less than a third of young people were ever even told that trades are viable, who could blame them for not choosing it as a career path? I mean, listen to this. A high school student said guidance counselors used to threaten that you're going to grow up to be a construction worker if you didn't pay attention to class. <laughs> but let's imagine, against all the odds, that you decide to actually commit to being an apprentice. What happens? Well, apprenticeship takes four to five years, during which time, if you live in my city, San Diego, you get paid $23 an hour. But some places report as low as $14. Unit apprenticeships typically have baked in raises every six months here in California for the five year training period. Plus, no student loans. Still, for a 22 year old gaining independence or a 40 year old switching careers, that base wage can be tight, especially in high cost areas like California. And when other jobs with fewer barriers to entry offer comparable or even higher starting pay, it's not hard to see why some folks might hesitate. The reality is there's a multi-year ramp before the big financial payoff kicks in. Something I didn't fully appreciate until I started to actually look into the stuff is actually how technical this is. Like 
P substrates, electrical transfer functions, anodes and cathodes, like all that I'm sure is completely comprehensible to someone who's in the game, but to a lay person or someone who's just starting out, that seems like a completely foreign language. And so maybe that's also a reason that it might be hard to get into the game. Just the level of knowledge that you need, it could be intimidating. All of this taken together, our policy decisions, cultural messaging, and the upfront economics mean that we have far fewer electricians than we need. The good news is that there are signs this could get better. Some apprenticeships are starting to offer hybrid classes as opposed to strictly in-person apprenticeships, allowing for greater flexibility. And states like Texas, Georgia, and California are investing in pre-apprenticeship programs, short courses meant to familiarize young people with the basics of electric work. If we want to actually solve this problem, we're gonna have to be imaginative as imaginative as we were in the 2000s, when we built the myth that a four-year degree was the only path worth taking. Vocational schools where we grew up seemed to be reserved for people who weren't making it in real school. Apprenticeship might not be real school, but it is five years of dedication to something important. I mean, listen to what this young lady said who began in medicine and made the switch to trades. Listen to what she had to say. I studied pre-med in school intending to become a surgeon, but now I work as an electrician. It's extremely rewarding. At the end of a job, you can turn on the electricity and see the whole system work right in front of you. She's right. At the end of your time on a job, you don't walk away with a degree. You walk away with the ability to power our future. For more stories like this, subscribe to The Hustle YouTube channel. And while you're at it, check out another story about how important energy is and watch our video about how laptops brought EVs back from the dead. Oh, and don't forget about that free report that I mentioned.